All right. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Solving Composition Differential Equations Using Taylor Series. Our presenter today is Reza Sores from South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. If you have any questions for the presenter during the session, please feel free to enter those into the chat at the bottom of the Zoom room screen, and we will be sure to address them at the end of the talk. So on that note, I'll go ahead and hand it off to our presenter. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen now. Let me know if you guys can see it. Okay. Yes, we can see it. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Raisa Suarez. I'm an undergrad student at South Dakota Mines, um, and I'm going to talk to you today about solving composition differential equations using Taylor series. My advisor is Dr. Travis Kowalski, and he had a talk about stereoarithmetic earlier today. Um, okay, so some background. Um, about um, my project. And this is this comes directly from very elementary calculus that you'd learn in an undergrad program. So a function is analytic at a point if it can be expressed as a convergent power series centered at that point. That means that there needs to exist a positive radius such that the absolute value of x minus c is less than r. So analytic functions are uniquely identified by the coefficients of their power series expansion. And in fact, these coefficients are unique and given by the Taylor coefficient formula given below there. So we can use the uniqueness of an analytic functions power series in order to solve a wide variety of problems in complex analysis. For example, we've identified a me method to um, solving um, analytic solutions to functional equations by repeatedly differentiating the given equation to isolate the derivative of the unknown function at a specific point and then deduce the series expansion from that solution. And this process is called the Taylor series method for solving equations. And this is analogous to forensics. That means we start with a piece of evidence and in our case, it's an equation. And then we extract the DNA sequence of the suspect from it by differentiating repeatedly to express the power series. Then hopefully from the power series expansion, we can identify the function from it. So I'll go through this method with a very simple ordinary differential equation that we've all seen before. Um, so our example here is y prime of x equals two y of x. And we have the initial condition that at zero, y is one. So we'll assume that we have an analytic solution at zero. And then we can express y as this Taylor series expansion. So we'll look at some successive derivatives of y. And you can notice here that the powers of, that the derivatives of y are sort of given by the powers of two. At zero, the nth derivative of y is given by the by two raised to n. And expanding with the Taylor series, we can see that this is a function that we all rec recognize as e to the two x. And I'll also plot successive Taylor polynomial approximations um, versus e to the two x, and you can see that it converges to e to the two x. So, what is a composition equation? Several problems in complex variables involve composition equations in which an unknown function, y in our case, is pre or post composed with known functions. So in our simple one variable example, we have y of g of x equals f of y of x. So here we don't know y, but we do know f and g. So if we do look at a concrete example, notice that there's no derivatives in this equation, there's just a composition. Um, so we have the composition equation and we have a couple initial conditions. And again, we'll look at derivatives of y. And we've crafted this example to sort of mirror the one that we've um, seen before. So the derivatives of y are given by the powers of two again. So can we combine ordinary differential equations and composition equations to get composition differential equations? And expressions like these frequently appear in applications arising um, in several complex variables. And the purpose of this research project was to investigate the analytic solutions to this general first order composition differential equation. And in particular, is there an existence and uniqueness theorem for these solutions? So if we look at a concrete example. We have y prime of two of x equals y of x. Now let's start with derivatives again. And the first equation here we get directly from our problem statement. And plugging in zero, we see that the first derivative at zero is one. And the other derivatives, um, we see that 
at zero, they can be represented as one over two raised to the triangle numbers. Um, and then we'll um, represent the derivatives at zero as one over two raised to the sum of the first n minus one integers, which is just the sum of the triangle numbers. Um, okay, so if we plot an approximation for this, you can see that this very rapidly converges. But if you look at another example, in this case, y prime of x square equals x, and we have the same initial condition that we had, you'll notice almost immediately that taking a first, taking another derivative at zero, we have the left and right hand, right hand side unequal. And this shows that not every composition differential equation has an analytic solution. So the next question we wanna ask is, is there a simple sufficient condition that guarantees that we can actually solve the system of equations through the Taylor series method. And this brings me to my first theorem. Um, we have um, f and g analytic when x is zero. And we wanna suppose that g of zero is zero so that we can keep taking the Taylor series at zero. And our sufficient condition is g prime of zero is not equal to zero. Then we can say that the first order composition differential equation given here has a unique formal power series solution satisfying the initial condition. And this is consistent with what we've seen so far in the examples that I've shown you. In the first example, we have g of x equals 2 of x. And notice that g prime of 0 in this case was 2. And this problem did have a solution. But in our second example, g prime of 0 was 0. And then our CDE had no solution. So I'm going to walk through the sketch of, a proof, sketch of this proof with a slightly simpler a composition differential equation. In this case, we have f of y of x, not f of x, f of x, y of x. So if we compute the successive derivatives of y again, and I'll show you this in composition notation so it's easier to read. You can see that we've, we have this numerator with a polynomial of f, y, and g, and the denominator is made of odd powers of g prime. So we'll write a general statement that there exist polynomials of three n variables independent of f and g, such that we can represent the derivatives of y as this polynomial over the odd power of g. And we'll do this by induction. Um, our first base cases are already established by the derivatives we took earlier. And I'm using alpha, beta, gamma here to emphasize that we're inducting on the structure rather than what actually, um, what, rather than the functions that actually make up these polynomials. So now if we assume that the inductive hypothesis is true, that means the n plus one derivative can be given by this polynomial over the odd power of g prime. We'll differentiate on both sides using the multivariable chain rule. And this is just the product rule. So the denominator, so the uh, one over g prime term times the derivative of the numerator plus um, the numerator times the derivative of the one over g prime term. And you'll see here that on simplifying, we do get that same um, nice structure that we've had before. So it's one over g, the g prime raised to the odd power times the polynomial. Um, and we can recursively define this formula of pn plus one with the alpha beta terms. So back to the proof of theorem one after that little segue. Um, since y is assumed to be a formal power series at x equals zero, y must take the form that we've seen in the Taylor series examples that we've seen before. Um, however, we do know that y satisfies the composition CDE and the initial condition. So we know the derivatives of y, the first derivative of y at zero, as well as all others by the claim. So this shows that the coefficients of any power series solution are recursively defined by the polynomial PK evaluated at the Taylor coefficients of f and g, and the previously defined coefficients of y. So in particular, we have a unique formal power series solution with the initial condition of y of zero equals a. Okay, so to summarize what we've learned so far, theorem one shows that the system of equations produced by the Taylor series method um, meeting the conditions of theorem one produces a unique um, set of Taylor coefficients. And thus a corollary of this result is that any analytic solution to a CDE meeting the requirements of theorem one is necessarily unique.
But theorem one does not address convergence at all. And for ordinary differential equations, this is addressed by the cauchy kovalev skaya theorem, which says that power series solutions to analytic ordinary differential equations are convergent. So our next question is, is there an analog of this theorem for CDEs? Um, when does the power series solution pr produced by theorem one converge? So one for one class of general CDEs, we were able to prove that the solutions guaranteed by theorem one actually converge. And this is our very simple CDE where we just have y prime of g of x equals f of x. We require that g prime of zero is not equal to zero. And then we can say that this indeed has an analytic solution. And the proof is rather trivial. If we know that g prime of zero is not zero, then we can conclude that g is invertible. And so we can transform the CDE into an ordinary differential equation. And thus by the cauchy kolmogorov theorem, we do in fact have an analytic solution. But unfortunately, the analog of theorem two for more general CDEs is false. And as, an, as a counterexample, we'll consider this, um, this CDE. I showed you earlier y prime of two of x equals y of x, and that had a solution that converged rather rapidly. But if we replace the two with a general k, you'll see that when the size of k is, when the absolute value of k is less than one, this Taylor series diverges. So the results of further empirical work suggest that the size of g prime of zero is rather important while determining convergence or divergence of solutions. And in all the examples that we considered, when g prime of zero was greater than one, the theorem one solutions appeared to converge rather rapidly. Um, whereas when g prime of zero was less than one, they appeared to diverge. And some, some cases when g prime of zero equals one converge while others diverge. And we haven't been able to um, create a concrete proof for this case. So to give you the audience an example of our investigations, a look at a particular example of a CD whose solutions we suspect are divergent. So in this example, we have y prime of x over one plus x equals y of x. And notice that g prime of zero here is one. And as before, we'll compute the derivatives of y. And we, we know that this series, is, this series has already been identified by Vladeta Jovovich. And he has a formula for these derivatives of y then. So we believe that this power series solution is divergent. If you consider the plot of the ratios of the consecutive Taylor coefficients, um, you'll see that this plot seems to increase, but rather we would want it to converge to a real number if the series has a positive radius of convergence. Um, the proposed Taylor series solution shrinks inwards, and this is different to all the other Taylor approximations that we've seen before that, that converge and tend to grow outward rather than inward. So this is some qualitative evidence that would suggest divergence. So based on our empirical work, we propose the following conjecture. So we have G is analytic at zero, F is analytic at zero comma A, and we want that the absolute value of G prime of zero is greater than one. Then the initial value condition has an analytic solution. And this is a sufficient condition. We know it's not necessary by theorem two. And it's a sharp estimate that means for all g prime of zero less than or equal to one, we can find an example for which the statement is false. So for forthcoming research, we wanna collect more data on the bounds of the solutions of CDEs, prove the divergence of the example I showed you, um, prove or disprove the conjecture that we just went over and find the necessary and sufficient condition for the convergence or divergence of solutions. Um, that's all I had for you. Are there any questions? Wonderful. Thank you so much for that great presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions at all? If so, feel free to unmute yourself or write in the chat as well. Just wanted to say it was a great talk. Really like that. Thank you.
All right. Well, if we do not have any additional questions, um, thank you so much for all of the valuable information you just shared with us today. If um, anyone does have additional questions for the Hawks team, as always, feel free to jump into that virtual booth to connect with a member of our team. Um, but it looks like this one actually wraps up the very first day of the annual Rocky Mountain section of the Mathematical Association of American meeting. There will now be a social hour for faculty um, and students, so you can view the chat for the session meeting room links and please see the conference website for a complete list of tomorrow's sessions with their descriptions as well. And then uh, while accessing the conference website, of course, don't forget to jump into that virtual exhibit booth, say hello to our team and also view a quick five minute demonstration of our materials to be entered into win that $50 Amazon gift card. Um, I will be putting all of the links into the chat right now to join into those social hours, but I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and we will see you again tomorrow.